it is my pleasure to introduce the person who has led the industry in embracing change like never before. Carla Bellacci took the helm of NAMA a little over five years ago. In that time, she and her team have challenged our thinking and pushed us past our comfort zone. I truly appreciate all she has done for NAMA and for the industry. Please join me in welcoming NAMA's president and CEO, Carla Bellacci. Hi everyone, and thank you Pat for that gracious welcome, and thank you for your leadership and vision of the board over the last year. No surprise this man got the job, right? So we have had quite a year, but listen, don't take my word for it. A picture's always worth a thousand words, so let's have a look. So, 2016 was quite something. The launch of a new brand, record-setting grassroots advocacy, and the premiere of the executive forum, well, that makes for a pretty impressive list. But I hope you saw your faces in all of that, because the applause truly goes to you. All of our dedicated members, not just for what you did in, the, in 2016 and in the past year, but for all the support that you have given to NAMA and to me and to my team over the last five. It was five years ago, almost to the day, that I stood on a stage in the Venetian, maybe in a different ballroom, and shared with you the vision, the bold vision that we had for our association. And it was five years ago when NAMA and the NAMA Foundation launched the Positioning for Growth campaign to fuel that vision. Thanks to your generous support, that vision became a reality, and you just saw it. With your help since 2012, NAMA has been able to significantly raise the profile of our industry, strengthening our voice on the national stage and at all levels of government. We have become a respected source of thought leadership, and perhaps most importantly, we have redefined the industry's scope and aspirations, making convenient services the solution to changing consumer demand and market opportunity. Of course, the driver for all of this has always been to deliver more value for you, our members. There's probably no better example of this than on the advocacy front. In large part, this success was built from the PFG campaign and allowed us this robust government affairs function. There's a picture of our, our 2016 fly-in. Look at the numbers. By forging strong relationships with members of Congress and our coalition partners, NAMA has succeeded in mitigating numerous threats to the industry, and interestingly, to various facets of our membership. Not just operators, certainly, oh, they're on the forefront, but product and machine manufacturers and more. So what's the money shot here? Well. We estimate that as a direct result of NAMA's successful lobbying efforts on three issues alone, the metallic changes to COIN, DOE vending conservation standards, and the FDA's calorie disclosure rule, we have collectively saved this industry and your businesses up to $3.6 billion. That is billion with a B. I gotta say that again, $3.6 billion. 
I don't know about you, and maybe it's a little self-serving, but I'm going to say that's worth the price of admission and maybe your NAMA membership. And the good news is, well, guess what? We're not done. Now that we've raised the floor for the industry and you have really embraced what we've identified as the critical components of change, it's time to cast our line again and to cast it farther out. At the NAMA board meeting in March, we explored the idea of what is this new brand that we have posited? What is and what can be convenient services? What, what fits under that umbrella? So we became futurists. We put on our gazing hats and we, we delved into broad questions like, so what future scenarios could play out here? Who are the potential competitors and could they also be our partners? Where is the blue water? If you've read that book, that the new market space that we could discover and dominate, not just compete, dominate. How do we bridge the gap between what we currently do, our current capabilities, and these seemingly unimagined possibilities? So in thinking about all this, we took a look at the forces and the trends that are, that are shaping consumer mindsets. And those are things, abstractions like the meteoric rise in big data, right? Everybody's trying to figure that one out. And population growth and public health challenges. We also looked at the, the drivers that are more specifically affecting convenience services. So, for example, consumers' growing interest in natural and local food options that they can savor, which is a complete juxtaposition to the idea and their desire for frictionless, super convenient retail experience. So they want it fast, they want it quick, they want it instant, but they want to slow down and really savor it. So, it's pretty heady stuff, right? What, what do these sea changes mean for your businesses? Well, it's going to take a while to play out. And, and as the year progresses, NAMO is going to be posing some ideas and recommendations for you to consider. But at the, at the forefront of this, we think there are three things that, that the industry must do to remain relevant going forward. First, we need to develop a more empathetic, localized understanding of the consumer. And be prepared to deliver individualized custom experiences. So emphasis on the word experience, not just a transaction, get delivering an experience that feels personal while also frictionless. Second, we'll need to become more data-driven than we are already, but that's gonna help you to target your offerings and execute on these experiences that folks are having in, this, in our away from home space. And third, we're going to need to pursue more strategic, and I'm going to posit non-traditional partnerships within the convenience services ecosystem. So maybe they're not competitors or the enemy after all. These new collaborations and broad alliances are going to broaden our perspective. They're going to bring new competencies that we don't currently possess. They're going to able, enable us to scale, and they're going to help us better serve our customers. And I'm also going to guess they're going to challenge your existing conceptions about how it all works. But that's OK, one step at a time. So I know that for a lot of you, this type of stargazing seems pretty far flung, maybe even to the heavens. And that's probably true for now. But it's NAMA's job to peer forward to be your futurist, to anticipate the things that will constitute and continue to make this, in, this great industry even greater. And we can't do it alone. As was the case five years ago, we still need you. We need your time. We need your energy. We need your thought leadership and, of course, your financial contributions to sustain and increase the momentum that we have built. In fact, if it weren't for the foresight, of the, of the, and the confidence of the companies who created the Positioning for Growth campaign and donated so generously, we would not be where we are. We wouldn't have this reality. So at this five-year anniversary, I want to I thank you, all of you who gave so generously. Anyone who made any type of contribution to the PFG campaign, at the, now that we are at the five-year mark, please stand up and give yourself a due round of applause. Please, stand up. If you donated to PFG, let me thank you. You're the reason it happened.
So there's, there's a lot more people who gave than stood, okay? And there's a lot of you, and I can't thank you, I can't name you all. But I would like to, special, I would like to say a special thanks to our top three donors. PepsiCo Food Service, Coca-Cola Refreshments, and Mars. I hope all of you will follow the example of these three visionary companies who stepped up at a critical time when it was to ignite change for NAMA. They recognized the rewards for the industry and for their companies would be greater than their investment. So this is just all to say that together we can do even more to grow this industry and to grow your businesses and to lead the way of putting convenient services at the forefront of everyone's mind. So thank you, past, present, and future, for your support. So, turning the page, I want to tell you about a couple of other things we have going on at NAMA right now. Uh, I'd like to share something specific to the One Show. So, obviously, look at this sea of people. It's a packed house, right? This is an enduring event that is successful year over year. But I have to say that the One Show moniker was put in place that it, and, and that was a point in time label that doesn't seem to have the same relevance that it used to have when we took two shows and made them one, right? So, and it didn't escape our attention that regardless of what we called this event, you guys call it NAMA. So we say, all of you say, we're going to see you at NAMA. Were you going to NAMA? Are you going to be at NAMA? What's happening at NAMA? Well, we had a new brand for the association last year. We have a new brand for this event. So it's my honor to unveil the new name and branding for the 2018 event, introducing, wait for it, the NAMA show. <laughs> <laughs> And why not, right? When you, when you have a winning brand, go with it. Um, but the new addition to this, to this uh, emblem is our tagline, which is meet with convenience. So as you can see, it honors our enduring legacy, the, brand that we, the enduring brand we have, and it incorporates our evolving image and identity of convenience services. Speaking of evolution, there's something else within NAMA that you should all know about if you haven't heard already. Our very own Dan Matthews, NAMA's Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, has announced his retirement, or whatever he calls his version of retirement. Following a storied career of over 50 years, including the last 18 at NAMA, Dan has set his course for different waters. So, so many of you know him. You know he has made an indelible mark on our industry in so, so many ways. The creation of NAMA's executive development program and the partnership with Michigan State University. Helping to establish FitPIC, our signature wellness program that pays dividends more today perhaps than it did then. And most importantly, working tirelessly and personally with you to improve your businesses. I have to say, it's very hard to express just how much Dan has meant to me these last five years. From the minute I got to NEMA, it has been, it was his sole intent and his sole purpose and his sole orientation to help me, to help the association, and to help the industry be successful. He is the best wing man ever. Dan, for your thoughtfulness, your tough love, your strategic mind, your energy and all the things that you've done, I can say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So I am beyond grateful for his insight and his perspective, and like all of you, I'm going to miss him enormously. And yet I suspect he looks forward to traveling with his wife, Mary, 
and to a lot more time on the golf course and maybe beating a few of you along the way. But we're hoping he might miss us just a little bit too. As many of you know, throughout his career at NAMA, Dan has been fiercely passionate about the importance of continuing education for all industry professionals, but especially for small operators, hence MSU and EDP. So I am very pleased to announce to honor his contributions to the association and the industry at large, the NAMA Foundation has established the Dan Matthews Scholarship Fund to carry on his legacy for generations to come. We're going to give you more details about the program later in the show and, and as we roll out throughout the year as to how you can participate. But we're very excited to debut this announcement right here and to recognize Dan's lasting contribution to convenience services industry. So finally, those of you who know Dan understand that he's not one to seek the spotlight. He always just said to me, Carla, I'm just doing my job. In fact, he made a specific request that rather than come on stage and make remarks in bright lights to this crowd of thousands, his greatest wish is to walk the show and to greet each of you individually to say his farewells. So over the course of these next few days, please seek him out and extend your thanks and your well wishes for a job well done. Thank you, Dan. So, earlier I spoke about NAMA's role and responsibility with stargazing for the industry. We strive to be intrepid explorers on your behalf, to seek out new worlds, and opportunities, yes, to help you go boldly where no one has gone before, right? So by now, you have figured out that I am a huge Star Trek fan. So it seems fitting that I leave you today with this parting charge. Live long and prosper. Thank you for being here. I look forward to learning and listening with you and have a great show.